So how close can you get to the core of a nuclear reactor without dying? Well, it turns out pretty damn close. This is one of the most powerful neutron reactors in the world. And in this video, I'm going to get within about 8 meters or 8 yards of it. So this is looking down on the core from on top. And this is about where I'm going to get to in this video. Okay, so the run's finished. So let's take a look at the sample. So we've got all these interlocks to stop you uh, irradiating yourself. I cross the room to the intrinsic field center. Wally is turning white. The program's locked in. We can't override the time lock. Because despite what they say, here we go. Safe. Despite what you see in the movies, Oh, we want gas, don't we? There we go. Uh, there are no happy endings to being uh, locked in a in the radiated zone. They call me Dr. Manhattan. Let's get some air in there. So, this is the diffractometer, and that up there is the reactor, and the reactor core is just about there, about oh, probably about eight meters from me. So that's uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, it's about where that wire is, just there. But what I'm going to do is we've got these radiation meters that give you oh, there they microsieverts per hour. Just to put that into perspective, background's about 0.2, so we're about twice background here. And if you think that's bad, right? So I'm now within oh good grief, eight meters of the core, something like that, and I'm only at twice background. If you think this is bad, when you get an airline, this will go up to about two, three sort of thing. Just to show that I really am. If I get a little close to the core, it averages counts that. Oh, you know, it does get a little more active. Um, anyway, so the reactor core is in there and there's something called a hot source over here which thermalizes neutrons and so the thermalized neutrons come down into this thing which is called a cast mat which is a big crystalline in it which monochromates the neutrons so uh right in fact it's a diagram here um reactors core somewhere over here comes onto the hot source hot source irradiates a crystal like this is monochromatic neutrons onto our sample then scatters them to the detectors, which is this big block thing here. And that weighs about three and a half tons. Uh, right, so we've got to get in to the sample cell. So we'll need a little bit of air. I'll have to put you down for a second. You'll forgive me. Until uh, there we go. Uh. There he is, that's the sample environment. So, this is the cell. Uh, these are some, oh, they're boron rich uh, steel flags, which cost an absolutely astronomical amount of money. Anyway, so here the radiation isn't too bad, but there is some residual that comes off the, uh, off the monochromator. So yeah, it's very, very, very localized, right? So it's only, only keeping your hands out of the, uh, <laughs> the uh, beam there is what's important. So that's what, 10, 100 times background or something. Anyway, so the bottom line is, if you want to dismount the cell... Um, it's the spider. The one that bit me. He must have become radioactive. And when his venom reached my bloodstream, I've absorbed the proportionate power and abilities of a living spider. Dismount it fairly quickly like that and just unscrew it from the top. And then you're basically done. So, nice and gentle. There we go, one dismounted cell. So a cell like this is, this is a titanium zirconium cell with a liquid sample in and it just costs about a thousand bucks or something. So from our cell, we scatter through this little window here. 
Um, and it goes into these detectors, these nine detectors, nine detectors, all which are fans on. And they're helium-3 detectors, which is one of the highest concentrations of helium-3 you're going to get on the planet. They're pressurized. This is the Secretary of Defense. Defend and hold that helium-3 at all costs. But against who? Against everybody. Because the thing is, the neutrons that come down here, and in fact, maybe this is a good time to actually say something about um, radiation hazards. You see, the neutron core over there, or all the, the reactor core, is putting out neutrons for science, uh, for research purposes. Um, and it, it, there, there are two sorts of radiation that you're worried about. The first is the sort of electromagnetic, which is essentially photons, very high energy photons. That's the uh, X rays and the gammas. And as we all know, gamma ray overdose does your the world of good. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation alters his body chemistry. And now when David Banner grows angry or outraged, a startling metamorphosis occurs. Um, but in reality, uh, gammas can be stopped by electrons. And the heavier your nuclei, the more electrons you get. So basically, it scales with mass. The more mass you have, the better your X-ray screening. So your typical piece of x-ray screening looks like that, big piece of uh, concrete. Um, in fact, from the reactor core here, just a couple of meters of water will screen most of the x-rays. Neutrons are a little trickier, however, um, because neutrons aren't, especially the fast ones, screened by electrons. Uh, so the only way you can really stop a, a neutron is to actually capture it with a nucleus and when they're captured, so that's, that's essentially what we're doing with the helium-3 detector here. The neutrons that come out of here have almost no energy. Um, so in order to actually damage living tissue, you need to be able to break bonds. And bonds are about an electron volt in energy. So the neutrons that come through here only have about a third of an electron volt energy. So they don't really have enough energy to even break bonds. However, there's a problem with neutrons is that they've only got a half-life of about 10 minutes and when they decay they release about a mega electron volt of energy that's a million electron volts so that's enough to break a million bonds of living tissue so it's in many ways it's kind of like uh, neutrons are like grenades um, you don't worry about getting hit by the grenade you worry about it exploding apart from if you had a grenade and it goes bang yeah, I'd say a grenade weighs about a kilo or something. Uh, it makes a fairly good bang. But if that were uh, the, the, the same mass of neutrons, it releases a million times more energy. So it'd be like a, 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 a thousand tons, kiloton. So you really don't worry about the, the neutrons energy itself. You worry about what happens when they decay. So, however, neutrons can be captured by certain nuclei like helium-3 in the detectors, right? That's how we detect them there. But they can also be stopped by boron, and boron-10 particularly. So this is like a rubber, um, which has a lot of boron-10 in it. And you don't need much of it, as you can see, right? And they capture the neutrons, and then when they decay and they release this mega electron volt energy, it's just stopped by the concrete. Which means that me, all the way back here, behind some more shielding, another instrument, and some electronics that actually run everything. That means that back here, I'm actually pretty safe. And that's the reactor over there. What I think we'll do to start with is we're just going to put the iPod, not in the direct beam, off to the side, just to see what it looks like. Okay. 